Hello, Grand Rapids. This is City Manager Mark Washington. I'm here at the South Division Fire Station Annex with uh, Fire Chief John Lehman, and you may see Axel, uh, who is the fire house dog or fire department dog? Yes, sir. Fire department dog. Fire department dog in our shot here soon. Uh, it's good to have you, Chief. Thanks for being here. Thank you. I had a chance to meet with your uh, colleague who's about to retire some time ago, uh, Chief Payne, but uh, I'm glad you can join us this time. Thank you. Um, Chief, tell us a little bit about where we are, and, and we have two uh, vehicles today. Trust me, the one to uh, would be your left, my right, uh, is the one that they use in operations, but tell us a little about the historical significance of the other fire. So this is a 1937 American LaFrance fire engine, and uh, the engine itself uh, we keep around because the um, the it's got a historical value to us, but also we represent ourselves in parades with it, with our retirees, and uh, we just we like to make sure that we're addressing the history of the department and, and keeping those traditions close to us. So, Chief, um, you're in need of hiring good quality firefighters in the fire service. Um, tell us a little bit about the department, how many firefighters you have, and some of the requirements for people who are interested in becoming uh, employed in the fire service. Yes, sir. We uh, currently have 202 firefighters, and we, uh, we operate out of 11 fire stations, and uh, we cover the city of Grand Rapids 24 hours a day. Uh, what we are looking for in firefighters are people that are qualified with a, a valid driver's license, uh, that are over the age of 18, um, have a high school diploma or equivalency of a GED, and are willing to work hard and get dirty and, uh, um, and work as a team. And, uh, and really take on the responsibility and duties of serving the citizens of Grand Rapids. So Chief, about how much can someone coming into the fire service with a high school diploma earn? So we, our starting pay is uh, just under $45,000 a year uh, as an entry level recruit. And, uh, and then after a five year period of time, you can max out somewhere around $75,000. Th that's pretty good living wage, especially both coming in as well as uh, once you begin to establish a career after five years earning that type of uh, uh, money. Chief, what about the physical requirements? You talked a little bit about some of the educational requirements in age, but, but yep. fire, fire, fire service is a pretty demanding job. It is a demanding job, and, and we work 24 hours at a time, and so it, uh, it takes a physical toll on you, and the conditions we fight under uh, when we're fighting fire are much like you know, being a soldier in battle. And so uh, we'll be walking you through the, uh, the physical ability course, the, what we call the, the CPAT test. And that's something that everybody takes in order to make them qualified to be a candidate. So um, <clears throat> some of the things that someone should be able to do is um, be able to lift, to pull, and you're, you're gonna demonstrate some of this uh, for shortly. But what about um, the, the life of a firefighter being, what's the typical work schedule like? Sure, so uh, firefighters start their day typically before seven o'clock in the morning, and uh, they'll work a 24-hour shift that'll take them all the way to seven o'clock the next morning. And we have uh, three shifts, and so they just rotate throughout the entire year. And uh, you're working with the same crew, the same team of people that you're assigned with um, all the time. You develop uh, a very strong uh, teamwork uh, network, and uh, multiple stations end up working together when we go to incidents and respond together. And uh, it's much like a, uh, um, uh, the scale of a military um, operation where we have um, rank structure and we have um, you know, people that are in charge that lead us and they have uh, leadership positions. And then uh, those uh, companies you're assigned with, we call them companies, um, are distributed around the city in order to protect the city and be able to respond in a very quick way. Now you do more than just fight fire. You'll, you'll get calls from, that are medical related and your firefighters are trained to respond to those. You also have other specialized operations, both for rescuing people in the water and also in buildings, which you and I witnessed one time. Right, um, so we have a lot of specialty teams. Um, we have uh, hazardous materials teams, technical rescue teams, water rescue teams. We have uh, fire and arson investigators. We have uh, uh, um, people that help to counsel juvenile fire setters. Uh, we have a multitude of teams, but then also um, the emergency medical part is something that we um, are doing uh, quite a bit these days. Uh, it makes up almost 62% of our total uh, run volume. And uh, so right now we are trained at the Michigan first responder level to be able to um, immediately respond, treat people on the scene, and then the ambulance service shows up and they end up transporting those folks to the hospital. 
Well, Chief, let's uh, see what uh, some of those requirements are for the physical agility test. Excellent. A couple of the highlights of things that's happening in our city, uh, we just talked about the fire service. Another public safety related matter is the hiring of our new police chief. Uh, recently I announced the appointment of Eric Winstrom, who's a commander in Chicago, to be our next police chief. And I want to thank the public for your engagement in the process. And Commander Winstrom is looking forward to relocating Grand Rapids along with his family and will assume the post on March 7th. And so uh, be uh, on the lookout for more information regarding his swearing in, which you can watch digitally and we'll have information on the location and the time and uh, that you may be part of this uh, a uh, very important uh, moment in our community. Also want to highlight a couple of discussions that happened at the last commission meeting. The city commission authorized the uh, approval of proceeding with grant applications that will enhance several parks throughout the city. City commission also authorized the creation of a nonprofit that will help advance social equity outcomes, particularly for people who have been uh, disproportionately impacted by the over enforcement of cannabis prior to its legalization. So the nonprofit will help to ensure that there's good social equity outcomes, that people who are interested in e entering the cannabis industry are not uh, met with barriers, but have uh, resources to assist them in technical assistance, as well as providing good community benefits. City Commission also received a briefing, an update on our upcoming National Community Survey, which will prepare the performance of our community or the resident satisfaction of the performance of our community to other cities across the country. So for example, the city's ability to respond to fire and other public safety uh, issues will be important to get your perspective as we want to know how you feel and we're interested to know how our services compare to other communities. Again, I want to thank you for uh, tuning in. This is the month of black history and so I want to encourage all of you to engage in some event to celebrate uh, the history and progress of African Americans. Although there's been much progress, we know there's still much uh, more to come. And until we are able to live out the meaning of our nation's creed, and as we say, each commission meeting when do the Pledge of Allegiance, where there can be a community where there's liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much.